acknowledging uh, all of us who are present, uh, members of the National Executive of the Great NDC Party, members of Parliament who are here, colleague, former ministers, uh, members of the Great uh, Akatamanso family, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and uh, <clears throat> every other person who is here. Let me begin by um, explaining that often when we talk about economy, and we talk about issues of money in our pockets, about businesses, about growth, um, often it sounds very technical, but really it's not meant to be. It's really down to earth, very simple for all of us to appreciate. I want to submit today that the platform on which every economy is built is the platform of trustworthiness. That when there is trustworthiness, every economy will grow. Once trust is broken, the economy is shattered and is broken. So therefore, if we want to build a nation that is great and strong, it must be built on a rock of trustworthiness, of truth. Unfortunately, our friends who are in office today are trying hard to build a nation that is supposed to be great and strong, but they actually are building it on a platform of deception and of untrustworthiness. Now, let me begin by saying that uh, the first point that we need to correct is a perennial talk that they have inherited an economic mess. And I, you hear it all the time. They inherited a crisis, they inherited an economic mess. That's why things really have not been as fast as they ought to be. We need to correct that. Now, it's not possible. In fact, let me actually state, even before I go into the details, that there is no government in the Fourth Republic that has inherited such a solid economic legacy as the government of Nanako Fuado. No government. Not the Rollins government in 1993 nor the Kufo government in the year 2000, nor Prof. John Ivan Satamir's government in 2009, even not the John Dramani Mahama government in 2013. The government that has had the most solid economic legacy is the Nana Kufuado's government. Now, so for them to actually claim that they have inherited the greatest crisis is really um, it's a big surprise. Now, let's go into some of the details. Handed over to them by the government of John Dramani Mahama, His Excellency, was two massive oil fields. And these oil fields took the production of oil. Uh, in 2016, it was about roughly 87,000 barrels a day, less than 90,000 barrels a day. And today we are talking about almost 200,000 barrels a day. And you have this handed over to you, yet you said you've inherited an economic mess. Meanwhile, your whole GDP today is on the basis of those two oil fields that have been handed over to you. Now, since the 1980s, and I'm sure those of us who were young at the time, we always know that every seven or so years, this country goes through what we call an energy crisis. Now, this energy crisis often came because of insufficiency of power. For the first time in our history, the government handed over to Nanako Fuado, a nation that had resolved this energy crisis for good. 
Meaning for the first time in our lifetime, we actually have enough power to be able to give electricity and give power to industries and to individuals. Yet our friends call this great legacy economic mass. Now, they inherit an ESLA fund which gives them a minimum of 3 billion cities a year. And not only that, we had actually resolved for the first time in many years the legacy debt, which actually is debt we had accumulated from previous regimes. We'd actually resolved that, in a, a, that legacy debt and handed them an ESLA fund, which on a yearly basis gives them a minimum of 3 billion cities. They call it a mess. We handed over to them nation that has a gross reserves, international reserves of a minimum of $6.2 billion. At the time we took over in 2009, in terms of import cover, it stood at 1.8 months of import cover. And the total reserves stood at $1 billion. We handed over to you a nation that has a gross reserves of $6.2 billion. And they call it a mess. We handed over to them cocoa production of almost 1 million metric tons. Almost the same as the highest production the NDC had in 2011. Handed over to them. They call it a mess. We handed over to them a balance of payment surplus. At the time in 2009, we had a balance of payment deficit in addition which we call twin deficit in 2009. We handed over to you a balance of payment surplus. And you still call that a mess. We handed over to you a sinking fund. The first time in the history of our country that any government had money put in a sinking fund. And that was handed over to the Akufuado government. Almost about 800 million cities in the sinking fund that was handed over. We handed over to them an infrastructure investment fund which we have put together to make sure that we can build leverage to be able to raise more financing for capital uh, 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 expenditure the first time in our history handed over to the to president akufuado and his government they call it a mess we handed over to them institutions like ghana port and harbors authority institutions that have become so robust so financially powerful that they, on their own, they were capable of using their balance sheets without needing government guarantee to be able to raise billions of dollars. In fact, GPHA became so strong that in 2016, GPHA was able to raise from the international financial market at a rate of less than 3% at the time was borrowing 3%. Hello? The economy is an economic mess. Yeah, we handed over to them that had solved the problem of massive subsidies. Now, these subsidies, both in utilities and in power, used to be a major headache for every finance minister. Right from Dr. through Kwame Pepera, through Osafo Manfo, all the way to Setepe. Every finance minister struggled with subsidies, both in power and utilities. We resolved the thing of this country over to you. You call it a mess. In 2016, we have brought interest rates down. I'm talking about treasury bill rates. Brought it down from 26% where it was. And brought it down to as low as 16%. That's 10 percentage point drop in one year. And yet, you say we handed over to you a mess. We handed over to you a country 
that everyone who mattered as far as knowledge of the economy was concerned knew in 2016 was going to grow a minimum 8% in 2017 and a minimum 7% in 2018. And they knew this already in 2016 because of the massive investment that the predecessor government had done. And we hand over this to you and you still call that an economic mess. We handed over to you a gas processing plant that on a yearly basis was saving this country about $300 million. Because you know, we used to import every year 12 parcels of light crude oil. And you put that amount together, that's huge money that we used to use. But because of this gas processing plant, we actually were saving a minimum $300 million on a yearly basis. Multiply that by four, that was to $1.2 billion. Remember, we, we uh, got a funding of almost $1 billion for this gas processing plant. Meaning, in a matter of four years, the savings alone that this gas processing plant has given us has literally recovered the whole loan that we got to get that gas processing plant. This is handed over to our friends, MPP. Yet, we handed over to them a mess. The savings, again, that this gas processing gives us is 180 million standard cubic feet of gas, which means that for the first time in our country, we reduce what you call the cost of power. Because if you are depending on light crude oil, it's far more expensive. It costs more. But today, because of the availability of this huge, what you call, quantum of gas, we reduce that cost so the people of Ghana can have given to them relatively lower costs. Yet to them, this is nothing but a mess that was handed over. We handed over to them a country that had seen an increase in electricity coverage from 52% to 83% in eight years. They have been in power for now entering into the fourth year. On a yearly basis, they are able to increase electricity by 0.5%, not even 1%. We took it from 52% to 83%. And actually, we're on course to giving universal coverage by the end of 2020 at the rate at which we were going. They have come into office today and they have had to push that to 2030 because they are moving at such a slow pace that there's no way they'll be able to extend electricity as we were doing. Yet, they said, we left a mess. We left behind water coverage that had moved from a rate of 57% up to 76%. That's water infrastructure. Investment in vital water handed over to them. Yet, it's a mess we left. We handed over to them a buffer stock company. The first time in the history of this country that a government had the ingenuity to come up with this vital establishment. Handed over to them. This buffer stock was so critical that for the first time in our nation's history, we were able to actually give even maize to the UNDP sometime around 2011 for the first time in our history. Today we hear our friends talk about the fact that they have SS maize. As if this is the first time this country has heard about SS maize. And they are using the buffer stock today to be able to push their planting for food. And they don't even have the gratitude to say thanks to those who had the ingenuity and the foresight to set up the buffer stock company. We handed over to our friends the most massive legacy of infrastructural projects across every sector whether it's health infrastructure, airports, harbors, railway infrastructure. Today when I hear the railway minister, uh, what's the word, um, building railways in his mouth, I smile. I, I smile. He's busy building railways in his mouth. When we actually assess a facility that today is going to give this country railway from Tema all the way to Akosombo. The first time in our history. Done, dusted, and handed over. Rehabilitated the railway line from Takradi through Kojokrum to Sekendi. Handed over. And yet, 
They claim we handed over nothing but a mess to them. I don't want to talk about educational infrastructure and infrastructure across every field. I'm sure some of my colleagues will go into that. Now, so what I want to say in, in finishing this first part is to say it is a mark of great irresponsibility for any group to continue blaming the predecessor almost four years in your mandate for your poor performance. Only an irresponsible, lazy, incompetent group of people will do this. But that is what our friends do on a daily basis. So let me again finish that first part by saying, if we in the NDC had inherited this massive legacy in 2009, we would have been in the high heavens. Now, if you have a government that understands trustworthiness and appreciates that an economy is established on trustworthiness, that government would ensure that it does not have double standards, does not have hypocrisy, and does not say one thing yesterday and do another thing today. One, a government that has integrity and credibility does not question the importance of macroeconomic fundamentals yesterday and actually call into question the integrity of the Ghana Statistical Service of Bank of Ghana and turn around today and be praising the same macroeconomic fundamentals. It takes double talkers, hypocrites, and people who are not consistent to behave that way. And you can build a country when you do not have the credibility, the consistency to be able to tell the truth at all times. A government that has credibility will not say taxation is a lazy man's approach to governance yesterday. And they come to power and actually impose taxes upon taxes. You don't do that. When you have credibility, you don't do it. And you can't build an economy if you do not have credibility. My brother Atu and uh, Isaac, I'm sure, will go into a little more of this. But let me just name a few of the things that they've done. A 5% increase they brought using the window to increase the VAT. These are the people who actually condemned VAT in the past, went on demonstrations. But as soon as they got opportunity, they went through the window to increase more. A 3% flat VAT, which actually translates to almost 20% if you look at the cascading effect that it has, not just on businesses, but the end point being the consumers. A luxury car tax, which was taking a minimum of 1,000, sometimes up to 2,000 from people. And after they, they saw that they, it was going nowhere, they came back and they came and removed it. They renewed the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy, which was supposed to end by the close of 2017. These are the people who said, these are all nuisance taxes. They actually extended also the 2% special import levy. These are all nuisance taxes. They extended it. They actually condemned ESLA and vowed that they will abolish it as soon as they take office. What did they do? Not only did they keep it, they actually used it as collateral to be able to raise funding. And the worst of all, they actually increased the ESLA. Talk about hypocrisy. Talk about double talk. These are people who actually fail to honor their campaign promise of reducing corporate income tax from 25% down to 20%. A very important promise that they made to the industry, the captains of industry, to be able to propel private sector. They've actually turned their back on it. These are people who actually increase the CST, that's the communication service tax, by 50% and typically put a gun on a telcos that makes sure you do not let the country know that it has been increased. Double talkers. You don't build an economy when you are not consistent, when you don't have credibility. These are people who say consumption was a crime yesterday. Whenever we do the budget, say, oh, too much money is going to consumption. Consumption, consumption. But today, the only thing they can boast about are things that have to do with consumption. When you ask them right now, like a typical parody, we'll start mentioning them. Free SHS, NAPCO, this, every single thing is about consumption. Those are the things they are glorifying today. 
Yesterday, consumption was a crime. Today, consumption is the best thing that has ever happened to Ghana since Kwame Nkrumah got independence. Now, these are people who condemn borrowing yesterday and actually told us that, listen, there is money in this country. You don't need to go and borrow. There's enough money. We know where it can be found. And then in less than three years, they actually have borrowed 75% of the total debt that Ghana has had from Kwame Nkrumah all the way to John Dramani Mahama in less than three years. 75% of the totality of Ghana's debt from Kwame Nkrumah to John Dramani Mahama. They have been able to borrow that in less than three years. And these are people who actually have problem with borrowing. These are people who actually shout that high debt when you come into office, you are, you, you are not, what's the name? They said you, you, we borrowed almost 80%, of, they have borrowed actually 80% of total debt from Kwame Krumah to, to, to this, but there's nothing they can show for it. And when you point it out, they tell you that, oh, you know, it's because of the depreciation of the currency. Really? Is this the first time the city has started depreciating? Meanwhile, these are people who claim that they are the best managers of the economy and the city has performed wonderfully under them. Yet, when you point to the high debt, they tell you, oh, no, 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 it's because of the depreciation of the currency. Double talkers. Lack of credibility, lack of trustworthiness. And you can't build an economy when you do not have credibility, you don't have trustworthiness. These are people yesterday when Onamu Setekwe was doing debt reprofiling. They actually said, no, 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 you can't borrow in order to retire debt. That's wrong. But today, they want the country to clap for them because they are borrowing to actually do debt reprofiling. If this is not the highest level of hypocrisy and double standards, I don't know what else can be so described. You can build an economy on such double talk. You do not promise comprehensive free SHS and end up giving the country double talk, a du double, a double track. You don't do that. What you promise, you deliver. But the fact that they actually promised without even knowing where the money was going to come from tells you the tragedy we are dealing with. From 2008, they started talking about free SHS. 2012, they same. 2016, they came into office. They still had no clue where to get their money. These are supposed to be very competent people. Very competent people. You do not promise to build factories in every district using the resources in those districts to make sure you actually bring an industrialization drive across the country. And then when you come into office, you come and, and what you call adopt companies that were there. I mean, when uh, my young brother Okujeto was 10 years old, companies that already were in existence and go and put a, bill, a billboard of one district, one factory on them and expect the country to clap for you. I mean, I mean, it's, not, it's unacceptable. And we have civil society. I mean, so many people who are supposed to be helping the country and everybody's quiet, allowing this massive deception to continue. You do not promise one village, one down. And then when you come into office, you go and give some miserable ponds that cannot even keep water for animals. And then when they tell you, you actually turn around and tell the country, Whoever told you that we can use 250,000 to build a dam. So what we are building is what the money can do. Really? It's amazing. Now you do not claim, for example, that President Kufo did a wonderful job because they are always touting the wonderful job that was done by President Kufo between 2001 to 8. Great fundamentals, they said. Growth was high. Yet, President Kufo did this under the IMF program. IMF program from 2001 to 2006, when they did the completion point, they were within the IMF program. Yet they are hailing all those great fundamentals. Yet you turn around and say, any government that goes to the IMF is a, is a government that knows nothing about economic management. Double talkers, hypocrites. It's, it's unfortunate that we have these, our friends, inflicted upon us. Now, let me do the final part briefly. And the final part really has to do with 
just examine some of the boasts that they are making. They're making a lot of boasts about how wonderful they have performed without even asking when they started believing in macroeconomic fundamentals. Let's analyze some of the things they are boasting about. They have brought inflation down to single digit, they said. And they have been able to keep it there for a few months. Is that all? Are we supposed to be so, sh so what, amazed by that wonderful performance? Really? In 2016, despite the difficulties we face as a government, we were able to bring inflation down from 19% down to 15.4%. And that happened in less than a year. And also make sure that as a result of that strong performance, inflation continued downwards even in the first month in 2017 when Nanaku Fuadu had not even yet set his government in place. Meaning the inflation they are boasting about today was actually work that we had left down which was continuing without any work on their part. And today we are supposed to be praising them for having brought inflation into single digit. And by the way, if you want to boast about single-digit inflation, you have to make sure NDC should not be present when you talk. Why? Because we are masters at it. We met inflation at 21% in May of 2009. And within one year, we brought it from 21% into single-digit within a year. And kept it there for almost three long years. And you struggle from what, 15.4 to single digit and you are supposed to be the masters of economic management? Really? But these are the people we talk about. Empty barrels make a lot of noise. And today even the inflation is supposed to be some rebased inflation. If we had rebased inflation during our time, I'm sure we would have kept single digit for a minimum of four years without sweat. You have a rebased inflation and you are supposed to be boasting. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> now they boast that the GDP growth has been wonderful. In 2017, they got, I think, 8.1. 2018, they got about 6.5%. 2019, they are hoping to get about 7. And that's supposed to be so special. Interesting. Now, the truth for the matter, as I mentioned earlier, is that the things they are boasting about has nothing to do with them. The IMF, the World Bank, the International Financial Market, the credit rating agencies, the, 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 what was it, the bilateral donors, every single one of those institutions, including the African Development Bank, knew already in 2016, what the growth rate of Ghana was going to be minimum in 2017 and 18. 8% minimum in 2017. 7% minimum in 2018. So what exactly are they boasting about? Somebody's work that had been done, and you actually come and you don't even show gratitude. You turn around and tell the person he's left a mess, and you are boasting on the investment that the person has left down. That's, that's not just height of ingratitude. But that's actually real hypocrisy. Now, in 2016, as a result of the problem we had, which had to do with the turret bearing of the FPSO, we had massive problem in terms of our oil revenues. So for that year, maximum, and uh, my brother John Ginapo will be able to confirm, I think maximum 940 million cities is what we got from oil in 2016. But in spite of that, and in spite of the fact that 2016 was an election year, and in every election year, generally investors, portfolio investors, and so on, adopt a wait and see attitude. Because they are not sure. Donors do the same. And my brother said to tell you that in 2016, a lot of the money that should be coming from donors, they hold it back because they are really not sure. So all those things conspire towards constraining your economic growth in an election year. But in that 2016, our non-oil growth stood at 4.6%. And by the way, we were now virtually, I mean, finishing the doomsaw because we are resolved the doomsaw by 
beginning of 2016. So the lag effect of that doomsaw was still affecting the general economy. But still, the non-oil growth stood at 4.6%. And our friends come into office. Doomsaw has been resolved. There is generally what you call a confidence in the, on the part of investors because Ghana had transitioned again peacefully to another election. So people are more confident in your economy. Oil resources, two massive oil fields handed over to you. At the end of that period, what was their non-oil growth? 4.6% the same as what we got in 2016. And yet this is supposed to be magical performance. Perform, performance. These are the people who are boasting constantly. Now, in 2011, we had a growth of 14.4%. When you say, they say, oh no, it was because of oil. But the non-oil growth in 2011 stood at 8%. For the three years that they have been in power, the first year, 8.1. It's just about the same non-oil growth we had in 2011. Second year, 6.5. Lower than our non-oil alone in 2011. This year, they are hoping to get about 7. Still lower. And yet these people claim that they are magical performers and everybody should clap for them. They boast about low deficit finance. And as I said, uh, my brother too and Isaac would, would deal a bit more about this one. But let me just say that how can you really be boasting about low deficit finance, budget deficit, when you actually take massive resources that are meant to develop the infrastructure of this country and you retain them in the form of capital, billions of cities, which are money you're supposed to spend. You retain them. So you take money from a road fund, billions. Money from Get Fund, billions. Money from the District Assembly, Common Fund, billions. Money from uh, NHRL, billions. And all this money which you're supposed to spend, you do not. Then at the end of the day, you actually clap for yourself that I've had a low deficit. Low deficit? Who cannot have a low deficit? When you can actually take away monies and you refuse to pay contractors arrears that you're supposed to pay, you are unable to pay them and bring all those contractors in their businesses on their knees and you are clapping for yourself for having low deficit? Really? You boast about low deficit when you are able to do the two together. Developing the country at the same time, keeping the discipline. That's when you boast. Not when you are emasculating the nation, strangulating the economy and you boast about low deficit? Really? Now, they boast also about how great the city has performed under their tenure. The city is supposed to be super under their tenure. That's, a, that's the amazing part. One minute they boast about how great the city is doing. The next moment when you talk about the high debt, they say, no, 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 it's because of the city depreciation. That's why the debt is high. They're just hypocrites. But let's look even at the performance of the city. In 2018, the city depreciated by about 8%. 2019, we are looking at about 9.2%, if not more, between now and December. The whole of 2016, with all the problems we had, and with that small oil revenue, which was less than 1 billion, they today are talking about more than 5 billion. We had less than 1 billion in 2016. But in 2016, our depreciation stood at 9%, which is about the same as what they have had in 2018 and 2019. And yet, these are supposed to be Miracle workers. No wonder when Dr. Baumia was confronted with the saying that, listen, you said that when you do propaganda with the economy, the exchange rate will expose you. He quickly somersault and they say, no, 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 I did not say that in 2012. I said it in 2014. When the whole world knew, he said that in 2012 at the time when the fundamentals were strong. Then again, we are talking about people who do not have the courage of conviction. They don't have the moral strength to stand by their words. They are like what you call uh, uh, acrobatics performance. They are like, like chameleons that change their color. They don't have the capacity to remain truthful. They don't have no credibility. They don't have the capacity to remain truthful. <laughs> now, so let me just finish by just mentioning that, listen, our friends in MPP should stop the boasting. If they manage to reach 14.4% in GDP growth, they can start a little boost. 
If they're able to get at least 8% non-oil growth in one year, they can start a little boast. If they are able to clock a minimum of 1 million metric tons of cocoa, they can start a little boast. If they've been able to keep single digit for a minimum of 33 months, they can start a little boast. If they've been able to achieve a B plus rating, I hear them boasting about having had a B rating. A B rating and you are shouting, we had a B plus rating and we are not even making noise. I mean, these our friends are incredible. Incredible. They should boast when they are able to bring treasury bill rates, which we brought from a high of 26% down to 9.2%. Single digit in treasury bills, the highest, the best in the history of this country. We have done, and yet we are not boasting. So, once more, I want to tell our friends, just chill. What it is you have done, we have done far more. And the nation is not losing sleep because of the noise that we are making. Like Nigerians will say, Oga, pack, make we see road. Empty barrels make too much noise. Thank you very much.